And there is the professor Pete Van Weeren shaking the hand of Chipper Jones on his induction day into the Braves Hall of Fame. You heard his call of Chipper's 2000th hit. And Chipper's on the phone with us. Where are you, my friend? I am in Des Moines, Iowa, guys. <laughs> of course you are. <laughs> <laughs> well, before we ask you what you're doing in Des Moines, first, thanks for joining us. This is a, a, t a tough day. I mean, there's no way to put it. We, we lost our, our friend and the last of the big three in the broadcast booth today. Yeah, it's a, it's a really tough day for, for Braves country. I was uh, sitting up here. I got up this morning, and usually every morning I wake up and I get on my phone to catch all the previous days and nights news. And when that came across my my timeline on Twitter, it was, uh, I think my heart dropped a good three or four inches. It was just one of those jaw-dropping moments in my in my life where I just had to sit there for five minutes, you know, in, in shock that, that he was he was gone. I mean, you played your whole career as a Brave. Pete Van Weeren covered your entire career as a player. I mean, that, that's just, that doesn't happen in today's game anymore. No, and, and he really did such an eloquent job, you know, at, at at covering everything, and there's no there's no wonder why every time we had a special occasion at the ballpark, whether it was you know a number retirement or or you know whatever it may be, that that Pete Van Weeren was the master of ceremonies. He was he just it, it flowed out of his mouth a little better than everybody else, and I don't think there's one single Pete Van Weeren moment that uh, that I have where it doesn't bring a smile to my face. And, and, and you guys know, I mean, when we get on the planes and whatnot, every once in a while I kind of sneak up there and, and talk to you guys and, and just kind of soak everything in. But it was different when Pete got involved in that, in that conversation because he just had these stories that were just captivating. And whenever he got into story mode, he made sure to listen. Yeah, everybody got up on the edge of their seat and got close. And when you were first breaking in, Chipper, and got to know the broadcast crew, I, I always wonder what a young player thought of Pete because he was definitely the more reserved of the of the guys. Well, I, Pete made it very easy on everybody, whether you were a 10 or 15 year veteran, whether you were, you were a rookie. He talked to you like you were part of the family. There was no, um, you know, it wasn't like. Uh, you were all that intimidated per se. It was just, hey, this is Pete Van Weir, and he's easy to talk to. He's a great guy, and, and I soaked up every opportunity I got to talk to him. You have a great sense of humor, very dry wit, uh, self deprecating wit, if you will. Pete wasn't that way, but he was a funny, funny guy once he let you into the circle. Is that a fair way of putting it? Was that the way you interacted with Pete on a humorous level? Oh, uh, there's, there's no doubt. I, you know, like I said, if every opportunity that you got to hang with Pete, you, you took that opportunity. He was very, you know, kind of a dry sense of humor himself. And, and, and you really had to get to know him to kind of get to know that wit and, and get used to it. But I just, you know what, whether you call him the professor, whether you call him Mr. Smithers, whether you call him <laughs> just plain old Pete, uh, we all had nicknames for him. He soaked it up. He loved it. And, and like I said, even even today, so many of the memories that I have of Pete Van Weeren have brought a brought a smile to my face. Yeah, we're showing a picture of Pete on the television chipper. I don't think you can see it where you are, but over Pete Van Weeren's career as a Braves broadcaster from 1976 to 2008, he broadcast 15 division winners. 128 playoff games. He saw four MVPs play, six Cy Young Award winners, three Rookies of the Year. There should have been a fourth, and <laughs> and six and six Hall of Famers over a 33-year career, and soon to be more Hall of Famers yeah. on that list too. Well, he's uh, he, he, we we had a good run here in Atlanta, and I can't think of a better guy to, to sit up in the box and and kind of neutrally call every single inning you know I didn't get a chance to watch much of it I did a little before I got to the big leagues but Pete was oh man he was just so eloquent you just 
you just really kind of got wrapped up in the game whenever he was talking the game. And, and if you got a chance to, to, to get a story out of him or get some stats out of him or some little nugget or tidbit that you didn't have a snowball chance in hell of knowing, he knew it, you know. And, and uh, like I said, just being able to soak up everything you could from him, it was it, it was a pleasure for me to sit in his presence you know, as much as I could. Only really chance I got to do that was on the plane rides, and man, we had some great plane rides through the years. And it's interesting how the game has changed from a broadcasting perspective, and I'd love to get your thoughts on this from a modern player's perspective. One thing about Pete was he gave it to you straight. I mean, he, he we have a clip, and maybe we've already played it. He never broadcast a game to please a player, a general manager, a team president, or a broadcast executive. He broadcast the game for the fans and if he saw a player not playing well he said so 